Surround our society um, as it is signs. Now, my being from New York, uh, I understand seasons and signs. Uh, here, we pretty much have it one way for the most part hot all the time. But in New York, we experience the fall, the winter, the spring, the summer, and we govern ourselves accordingly. There are signs that indicate seasons that change. There are some signs that our Lord is saying that the Messiah, our King, is called Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, Jesus gave his disciples because they were intrigued and so in love with him when he told them that I'm going away and I'll come back and send you a comfort. They did not want him to leave and they were excited about his return and they had an expectation that as soon as he left, he was coming back. You all know it's been over 2,000 years. And there's Bible prophecy and things that are given as a sign that the king is soon to return. I want to share a few things briefly. Now, I don't know if it would be too much of a distraction. How many of you get on YouTube? Any, any YouTubers out there? Okay. I'm going to write down on my channel real fast. We're going to pray it. I'm going to open up some scriptures, put some things on the screen. I want you to write down on my channel. I want you to subscribe and send me a friend. Invite, but there's some things that I will not be able to go into in depth that I talked about on YouTube. My channel is called Never Scared 11. One one. Never Scared One One. Never Scared One One. Now, also, I want you to write down my website because I have a blog there that I can keep you posted on these entire events. It's, it's scjohnsonsr.com. SC. Johnson. Okay, scroll down a little bit. There's my face right there. I was a little slimmer than I hope it SC, it is, there's no dots or no space, just scjohnsonsenior.com. And you'll see some things. In fact, why don't we pull up, well, look, this is, hold, hold it right there for a minute. We'll come back to that. Let's open up our Bibles quickly. If you have them, if not, don't worry about it. We're going to put them on the screen. We'll come back to that blog channel in just a minute. Let's go to uh, St. Luke's Gospel. We're going to pray real fast. Now what my spiritual sons do, they're not about hip-hop at all. I think we're going to be setting this up. I'm going to come back and do a little teaching on hip-hop. Yeah. Now it is a cult church. It's a cult church. And how it is impacting you. Hip-hop is actually a religion. It's a way of life. And what they do is not hip hop. What they do is they rhyme or they rap uh, to a beat the truth of scripture. And so there's a distinction there, and I want you to be made aware, aware of that. But what I want to talk to you today about is that our king is soon to come. Now I, I can minister to the Lord, show me a lot of things. I can minister to your problems, and that's what the church is, 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 is about primarily today bringing the most high down to our levels and making him a problem solver. But in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but he said, be of good courage, for in me, you'll have peace, you'll overcome Amen. the world. And we get so captivated. Modern Christianity now has reduced uh, the most high to a uh, sugar bag to fix an individual when he doesn't do what we want him to do. In the time frame that we want him to do it, we get angry with him, we try other things. But the truth of the matter is, if any man will seek to save his life, Jesus taught that he'd lose it. But if he loses life for my sake in the gospel, he would find it. Amen. Right. And so what's happening is I'm, af I'm afraid that we're so preoccupied with uh, our day-to-day -day routineism and what we want out of life that we're failing to see the signs of his son. Amen. I talk, I'll have a cute message for you to come up and get saved again, like something you do every Friday. I got something that I hope puts the fear of God, and the reverence of God, and the respect for the things of the Most High, so that this time when you give your life to Him, you give it all to Him. Amen. And mean it. Amen. And so, in Luke's Gospel, let's pray first. Reach over, just touch somebody. Don't pinch them, just touch them. <laughs> Hold on to them. Just touch them. Point of contact. Father, we certainly appreciate you. We love you. We thank you for grace and mercy. Father, we ask strongly that you bless the person 
who I'm touching now to my left and to my right. Spiritually, psychologically, bring an anointing, send an anointing, tidal waves it and floods in this place that will arrest our attention. That the engrafted word whereby is able to save the soul, the soul into our hearts. And so, Father, I decrease, you increase within me, out of my belly flow like rivers of living water. Let me teach you, preach with simplicity, minister exhortation to your name, and glorification to your name, none the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said, Amen. All right, let's lay a foundation really fast. If you would put up for me on the screen Luke chapter 17, I'm going to work on the prequel a little bit. Actually, that's your wife, though. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Luke chapter 17. And, Tweet, if you give me. Um, verse 26. Give me verse 26. We'll take a few verses there. We'll move that. All right, okay, so let's quick. Looking at the clock there. All right. I'm going to teach a little bit and I want you to participate. Okay? All right. As it was, read out loud, please. Come on. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Come on, next verse. They did eat, they did drink, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. You know what? Let's, let's read on a little bit about Lot. Come on. Likewise. Likewise. Also. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. Read. But the same day that Father and Alice started to bring in fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Okay, verse 35. This is very important. Now we embrace this next verse. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay. Now, I would like you to see quickly um, Luke chapter 21. If you'd be so kind to get me verse 25. I have to hurry, but I want to share as much as I can and be as thorough as possible today. All right, let's read, family. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of the nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roar. Next verse, please. Men's hearts are for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the earth are coming to be shaped. Read the next verse. Now we're going to go to one last scripture and I want to go back to my blog page uh, and it'll help me. If you can get me, sweetie, just Hosea chapter, the prophet Hosea chapter 4, please. Right around verse 3, I believe. There's so, I'm so filled with so much, but again, we understand that my time is limited, but I do want to give you just enough to sober you a little bit. And I appreciate talking to you young folk because there was a time that the Hebrew Israelites, when Moses delivered 2.5 million of them, that the Most High actually, his patience with their stiff neck and hardened hearts, for the Hebrews, the Bible says that he swore his wrath that they would not enter into his rest because they heard the word, but they didn't mix it with faith and right. then they heard it. And so their carcasses died in the wilderness and he raised up Joshua and Caleb, for they had another spirit and he took all those that were 20 years old and younger and brought them into the land of promise. And I'm afraid that us, us uh, older folk who have been uh, walking with the Lord or in Christendom, we're becoming dull, desensitized in the cares of this life, are finding us preoccupied that we've lost a sense of urgency. And so we become dull of being able to see the sun. Hosea chapter 4, verse 3. Read with me, family. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. If you can go to my blockage and 
this morning. Show, show you all something. And most likely, sweet, it'll be on my in my January section. I don't know if you all are aware, but these are signs. <laughs> Messiah Jesus said to us, he spoke to the hypocrites or church people of his day, and he said, You can discern the skies. You say today it's going to be hot, and it is. It's going to rain, and it is. And he said, Why can't you discern the times? I don't know if you young folk. With this Xbox generation and the hype of the Super Bowl and the New Year's celebration that brought the year in and all of the excitement that goes in the day-to-day -day life as well as the problems, if you were derailed and distracted from noticing what occurred on 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one of this year. The number 11 is strategic biblically. First of all, the number 1 represents the true God, unity. The whole of Israel, thy God is one. The number two represents unity, covenant. Number three represents completion, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Number four represents the earth for the four winds, east, west, north, and south. Number five represents grace. Number six represents mankind. Number seven represents Perfection, completion, and rest on the seventh day. What did the Most High do? He rested. Talk to me, Joy. On the eighth day, eight, I'm sorry, eight, the number eight means new beginnings. Number nine means birth. A woman carries a child for nine months and she gives birth. Number ten brings balance. It brings balance. Kingdom authority. Number 12 is apostolic order, for there were 12 disciples, 12 apostles, 12 tribes from, from um, um, Jacob, right? Yes. Number 11 is the number for judgment. If you notice from Genesis to Revelation, it's not every single chapter of 11 and every single verse of that, but primarily the bulk of them deal with some sort of judgment, destruction, or some sort of negative, evil aspect. Genesis 11 is where we find the Most High coming down and sending confusion to those who ran with Nimrod, who sought to build a tower up to the Most High. That's where we get the word Babel from. When you speak in Babel terms, you're babbling along. It was the Tower, tower of Babel. He judged them in Genesis 11. Proverbs 11 once says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but the just weight is his delight. Are y'all following me so far? Yeah. Y'all following me? One, one, one of this year. I don't know if you saw it, but we're going to hopefully, uh, no, wait, yeah, that's fine, but I need you to go to January Post. If you look on the side, you'll scroll up, you'll see January Post. It'll help me. I have it here. It'll help me on the screen. Okay, you see what it says? Um, slide down, slide down. I'm sorry. Slide down. Some more, some more, some more, some more, some more, some more, some more. All the way to the bottom. Right there. Okay, you see what there, right there. I want you to, I don't know if you all have been noticing the moon, the stars, and paying attention to the news. There's a media blackout. They're not sharing everything that's going on. Now, I don't want to scare you, but I want to put fear in you, and there's a difference. Mo Noah in, in uh, Hebrews, by faith, Noah prepared an ark. He was moved by fear. Not fear that makes you afraid, but fear that reverences the Most High. Yes. Most folks say, I have faith, I'm going to just trust the Most High. He's going to, he's going to make a way. That's a lame excuse to be lazy. 